Hi, good morning. Thank you all for joining us uh, here this morning. Uh, as you can tell, we have a lot of people here, and, and we're bringing awareness to uh, a Dyslexia Awareness Month in Laredo, Texas. Uh, again, uh, the media, thank you for covering this. It's an important issue that Laredoans and beyond our city boundaries uh, should know about. Uh, I would like to first to thank all the, uh, the advocates, and you can tell there's, there's plenty here, and there's more probably viewing uh, uh, there are your homes and businesses um, uh, that that do want to support that do want to get behind the uh, dyslexia community. Uh, also, thank our friends um, uh, that uh, have in the past uh, uh, shed some light and and some of these friends or the familiar faces that you see here as well uh, that that understand this uh, disability uh, and it's and it is a disability of learning. Uh, I know that many of you here are not only supporters, but are parents, uh, the relatives, and, and of course, uh, loved ones uh, that, that do uh, uh, have to uh, endure this, this, this ordeal, I guess, of uh, dyslexia, but it can be overcome. Uh, uh, and that person may be even you know, some of us here uh, that have experienced uh, some of this. Uh, uh, some of us may not even know. Uh, uh, but this is why it's so important that we're, that we're here and we talk about this important topic. Uh, and again, uh, the purpose of today is, is to uh, raise awareness on dyslexia and proclaim this entire month of October as Dyslexia Awareness Month. Uh, dyslexia is a language-based uh, learning uh, disability and refers to a cluster of symptoms which result uh, in people having difficulties with specific language skills uh, particularly reading. Uh, uh, students with dyslexia usually experience difficulties with other language skills such as spelling and writing and, uh, and pronouncing words. Uh, uh, dyslexia affects individuals uh, uh, that, uh, that throughout their lives uh, have, have not succeeded academically uh, and, uh, and have a difficulty and of course in the instructional environment. Uh, it is most common uh, learning disability in individuals with, with uh, this medical condition have difficulty in the areas of language processing. Uh, one in five people uh, suffer from dyslexia. About 70 to 85 percent of children who are placed in, the, or placed in special education for learning disabilities uh, or uh, dyslexic uh, um, people with uh, dyslexia experience difficulties in acquiring and using written language. Uh, it is a myth that individuals with dyslexia read backwards, although spelling can look like quite jumbled sometimes uh, uh, because students have trouble remembering letter symbols for sounds and, and forming uh, memories or words. It's quite troubling uh, and, it, and it's very frustrating. Uh, it is important to understand that people with uh, dyslexia are usually more creative and have a higher level of intelligence, but yet they're, they have to endure uh, with this uh, uh, disability. Uh. But most importantly, we're here today to tell parents and the community uh, that dyslexia isn't something a person should be ashamed of. And that's important. Uh. There's no reason to hold back uh, uh, or hold them back uh, as, as an you know, obstacle. We have resources, we have people that understand it, that have dealt with it and have helped a lot of people here. Uh, it is important, obviously, to find the right tools and support each other. Uh, and uh, we're here to work together and help each other as a community to strive for excellence, no matter how big or how small th those issues uh, may be. Uh, uh, as I say, we, we have people here that, that uh, have experienced this uh, on a personal level, and, and I would call upon our uh, uh, Council Member uh, Nelly Vilma, a uh, council member from uh, District uh, Six, uh, to to maybe uh, expand on 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 dyslexia because I know you you've had to deal with it yes. basically uh, a, a big part of your life as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, and first of all, thank you to all the advocates that we see here because I, I know that our community really needs you uh, to become educated. As a mother of a special needs child with learning disabilities, I've experienced this firsthand. And I think when I went through the checklist and evaluations, I could see some of those behaviors in me. So I know she gets it from me. Uh, but it's something that we 
as parents first need to go through a denial phase and then uh, try to learn about the disability and how we can best provide for our kids the supportive skills that they need. And sometimes, you know, we try with different tutoring and trying to, to overcome this, but it has to be specialized too. And I see a lot of the, the teachers here from the dyslexia program. So it has to be specialized uh, tutoring and learning more how we can uh, make it easier. And sometimes it comes, uh, in, our, in our case, it came, it came with dysgraphia and dyscalculia. So there's other issues to look at as well. But I want to uh, commend this group because I attended your, uh, your conference at TAMU, and that was very educational for me also, uh, learning from uh, even the attorneys that you, you took there. Uh, it's important for the parents in the community to become informed so that they can rightfully advocate for their kids as they go to their yearly ARDs and ask for the modifications that they need. Don't be afraid, ask for the modifications because if you don't do it in time, if you don't get the diagnosis in time, then it might be too late for your child to try to catch up. So let's uh, work together in, in this endeavor and continue the, the education process. And thank you for all of you advocates that are out there to lend us a helping hand for all the parents. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Yevelman for those words. Uh, uh, let me read the proclamation then uh, yeah, I would invite more uh, commentary uh, uh, from the group uh, to, to try to uh, basically explain you know, your experiences uh, as, as teachers, maybe even parents as well, uh, to, uh, uh, toward this uh, disability. Uh, so this is a, a proclamation from my office, whereas uh, dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin, often inherited whereas it is characterized by, by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition, poor spelling, decoding abilities, and may include problems in reading comprehension, which can impede vocabulary growth and acquisition of knowledge. Whereas early identifications, specialized instruction by highly trained teachers in multi-sensory learning programs uh, and emotional support can contribute to the success and I stress success of dyslexic uh, students. Uh, whereas literacy is a critical skill needed uh, for educational success, and students who do not read at grade level by third grade are four times more likely not to graduate from high school. Again, let, yeah, let me repeat that. Uh, uh, students who do not read at grade level by third, by, by third grade are four times more likely not to graduate from high school whereas teachers often receive not enough training on, dyslex on dyslexia despite research conducted by the National Institutes of Health indicating as many as one in five individuals struggle with dyslexia and related learning disabilities equivalent to approximately 13,400 students in the Laredo school districts. Uh, so that's a big number uh, and this, uh, this is somewhat alarming. Uh, uh, now, now, therefore, I, Pete Sines, by virtue of the authority vested in me by you all, uh, as mayor of the city of Laredo, County of Webstead, Texas, do hereby, hereby proclaim the month of October 2018 as Dyslexia Awareness Month in Laredo, Texas. Um, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would call upon Ms. Guerra. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, welcome your full name for, for the record, and, and please explain why yes. you're here and why, this is, why you're so passionate behind this, this movement. Thank you. My name is Melissa Guerra Cáceres, and I am the founder of Dyslexia Smart. Because four years ago, my son was identified with dyslexia at about the third grade. And that can be traumatizing for a child not to learn how to read. And we don't want to wait four more years. We don't want to wait one more year to tell our kids, here are the tools for you to learn how to read. Because we know that they can be successful with early identification, with the emotional support of the families. And we know that if those kids are identified early and they have that support, they can be successful. There are CEOs, there are entrepreneurs, there are lawyers, there are doctors. But if they do not, they begin to act out. And we know that right now in our prisons, of Huntsville in Texas, there is research that there's 80% non-functional literates, illiterate there, and 48% of them are dyslexic. So we know that we have the most common learning disability, it's the most research, and we know that there are answers, and we need to acquire them, and we need to invest in our um, children today. And it's an urgency that we not let another year go by, because every time that we wait another year, that's a loss of opportunity for our children, and a child with dyslexia is an adult with dyslexia. So I invite you to learn 
more about what dyslexia is, and I invite you to say dyslexia with us, Laredo. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, and Ms. Guerra. And, and I will call upon LIST representatives as well, and I know you're, you're kind of in the head of the pack here. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you mind introducing yourself and explaining? Yes, good morning. Good morning. My name is Patricia Vicisneros. I am Section 504 Dyslexia Coordinator for Laredo Independent School District. And this morning, we are here supporting our community organization, Dyslexia Smart. I applaud Ms. Melissa Guerra for heading this organization, and it, uh, it was on a personal level that spearheaded her to begin advocating for dyslexia, but in doing so, she has brought a great awareness to this community. So we are here, the dyslexic teachers are here from Laredo Independent School District to support, to, to encourage teachers to, uh, to help our dyslexia students because they can be very, very successful as Ms. Guerra stated to you. So let's proclaim Dyslexia Awareness Month, October. And not just October, but throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Uh Feel free to come to the mic and speak. No? Do we have any other parents or, uh, that would like to, uh, need to express maybe their concern? See? Go ahead. Yeah, we're, we'll get you Thank in. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello, my name is Rihanna Tunin, and I'm a mom of a son that is uh, dyslexic. Um, I just want to share that this is also not um, a language um, it's not something that's affected by language. Uh, people who speak Spanish and English, uh, are, they're all affected. Uh, my son is bilingual, and I kept thinking that he was having a hard time due to, to us speaking two languages at home. And it wasn't until he was identified in third grade that we realized that no, he, he had dyslexia and he learned in a completely different way. It had nothing to do with the fact that he spoke Spanish and English. Um, it just had to do with how he was born. And um, now that we, that we have him identified, now we, we've learned a lot more on how to teach him, on how to be patient with him and support him so that he'll like school and get up excited knowing that he wants to go, not feeling ashamed because he can't read um, like the other kids in his class. And that's it, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, yeah, anyone else feel free? Uh, yeah, see? No? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm always inquisitive. Uh, uh, so what, how do you, what's the first sign of your, uh, I guess, elementary teacher, uh, the first, uh, can you detect this uh, pre-kinder or, or uh, you know, at what point? Uh, the fact, you know, obviously children, you know, take time to learn and, and, and as they develop their, reading skills and spelling skills. Uh, so what's the first indication that I would ask maybe a mother or, or, or someone here, uh, you know, what can alert you and say, you know, we need to you know, kind of track this child or, or at least you know, pay closer attention to this child because he may, uh, and then as, as things develop, uh, so uh, is there an answer to that? <laughs> Well, there is a 90, over 90% 90 accuracy identification in kinder. So we know that we can identify these kids as early as kindergarten and not wait to fail them when they get to third grade and fourth grade. And one of the things that you may see in a child who's that young is the lack of rhyming, adding different sounds to different words, um, deleting certain sounds to the, to the word. So those are just some of the examples when they are that small, but there's a 92% accuracy rate identification in kindergarten. Well, that's amazing. Uh, personally, I think I had dyslexia also when I was a kid because I had a hard time with the language, and I thought it was because of the, uh, the uh, we, we, you know, we spoke Spanish in, at my house, and then uh, the schools were insisting English, and, and I couldn't get the words, I couldn't get, the, I couldn't express myself, and it's, uh, and it's so frustrating, and I can you know, empathize, I guess, with, with some of our kids, you know, simply because we, we live in this bicultural, uh, bilingual, uh, which is good, because we need to. Uh, but I know some, some kids have you know, trouble adjusting to it, or at least uh, coping with it, and then 
and then being successful at it as well. But it takes time, uh, it, and this is why I tell people you got to be patient, especially kids. Uh, you know what you are now is is not an indication that you're gonna stay this way. You know we always improve, and and uh, through the hard work of these people that have dedicated their lives, uh, you know there's so much more success uh, stories uh, today. Uh, so anyone else, uh, and if not, uh, thank you.